to make up a tiny bit. Table week uh, session today, so it's four days out. Um, 40 minute easy run, strictly zone two, uh, which was probably around five, 518 pace. So I've just done that, and then an injection of a bit harder work, a bit more intensity for just 15 minutes today. So it was 250 meter ski, I was pulling around 207, 250 meters. That allowed me to move straight into a sled push. Uh, 20 kilo lighter than race weight, so I don't want my legs blowing up. I should be doing anything race weight um, in terms of sled work the day of, uh, sorry, the week of the race. So that was about 100, 100 kilos. Uh, just literally 15 meter sprint with the sled and then into 20 dumbbell snatches. Again, kept it lighter than I would normally go, so I did this 12.5 kilo, 20 reps. Um, and that was literally just a 15 minute AMRAP, a 10 minute easy bike, and then into uh, just a 10 minute EMOM. Gonna do three box jumps, one heavy power clean. Again, it's probably only gonna be about 70% one rep max hitting any big big numbers this week this, this close to a competition so yeah so that's what we're going to finish on in a second a 10 minute bike keep the heart rate up and then 10 minute e three box jumps keep some power in the legs one heavy power clean 10 minutes done it's been a long day the gym it's half seven um just forgot we had uh, no eggs so it was a quick run to tesco to get some organic free-range eggs this is not your usual dinner by the way but again as i've said before i eat what i feel like and what i crave um so basically i've just mashed up well, not mash, well it does look like mash but i've just put together um a six egg berry omelette if you have not tried this you need to try it so basically it's frozen berries so a mixture of raspberries uh, blueberries blackberries uh, fry them in some coconut milk uh, no not coconut milk coconut oil and then once after about a couple of minutes and the juice starts get going in the pan you basically whisk six eggs um, I've actually done four eggs and then two egg whites um, covered the berries and then let, let it sit like an omelette in the pan, let the bottom start to uh, go hard. And then I had the oven on, no, the grill on, put the whole thing under the grill for, well, you can start to see the brown, uh, the top go brown. Um, and that is unbelievable, honestly. It's so simple, but it's so delicious. So I've basically, doesn't look that amazing, but I've basically done that with some almond butter, and a drizzle of local honey. You could always put uh, like um, yogurt with it as well. Anything really, uh, but that is banging. It actually used to be a breakfast. Well, it's usually a breakfast dish, but I'm craving it. I thought I'd just put honey everywhere. Um, I'm craving it. I'll put a little bit of almond butter on there as well. No palm oil or anything like that in that. So uh, Meridian is the best one for almond butter. Uh, much prefer almond butter to peanut butter. Don't tend to have peanuts. Um, I'll save that story for another day, but yeah, I need to get this in 
That's probably gonna bag me today with a big lunch, my shake. It's probably gonna bag me around 2,000. I don't track it really precisely, but it's probably gonna bag me around 200, sorry, 2,400 calories today, which is pretty spot on, but I try and aim anywhere between like 2,200 and 2,600. If I'm having nutrient dense foods, then I don't need to really worry too much about how many calories I'm having. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, if I, I run better if, you know, I could probably run on 1800 calories as long as that's good coming from good quality calories. Um, then that's so much better than having, you know, 2,500, but it's not nutritious value. No, no, tr no nutritional value at all. Um, so yeah, so this is my dinner. Uh, I feel like I've got my whole day the wrong way around, but this is what I'm craving post-training. So just done my heavy power cleans and box jumps, uh, 10 minute EMOM. Uh, speed primer tomorrow, some ski erg row threshold stuff to keep everything moving, but laying off the running a little bit now, no lower body after tomorrow. We fly Thursday morning, so last big day of work. This is the challenge of being an athlete and a coach and working, a working athlete essentially. Um, so going to get the balance right. I'll obviously let my clients know tomorrow if they need anything. I'm clocking out after Thursday to get in the, in the right headspace to race. Um, so yeah. I'm about to have this and then I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Had an appointment with the mortgage lady this morning. Um, I try not to pack too many appointments as such into my race week. Again, I can just drain a lot of energy and stuff like that. So I've moved my accountant's one because I know it's going to be super stressful. Uh, I've moved that till next week. Um, we fly in the morning. So just wrapping up client check-ins making sure that everyone is good before I clock out tomorrow. Um, so yeah. So the fulvic minerals are going down a treat. Belzy's actually cooking today. She is preparing a, we've got home, done our work. I need to be at a friend's house at one. It's now quarter past 12. So I just got off a client call. Um, and then Belzy's preparing some shepherd's pie. Again, it's easy, right? Really quick, really easy. So there is lamb, organic lamb, uh, chopped tomatoes, peas, mushrooms, garlic, all the goodness. And then this is mashed sweet potato and sweet, no, and carrot. This is gonna go in the oven. And then that's gonna do me for lunch and dinner, to be fair. Disgusting. Um, Bella has a weird phobia of shepherd's pie. I think it's so she's really gonna gross. cook herself some chicken. And I think for silly pasta. Not sure. Is it for silly pasta? How many times? Or is it spinach pasta? You? What? Don't video me. Why? Because it's called life. Shepherd's pie. Voila. With all the micros. Avocado. Oh. I thought I'd do this. Do this just while Jade is on a client call. Um, so one of her go-tos during race week, and most of the time to be honest, every week, is a beetroot, carrot, apple and ginger juice, all organic and um, veg, and yeah. I cannot even make it past accessorize. So we are delayed, so I said to Bella, let's go have a little pop in accessorize because could maybe do with like a new bikini. All of mine are about six years old. And then as we walk in the door, I hear those dreaded words, I could do with. So it turns around to be about Bella as we walk into another <laughs> shop yet again. So what would you, what do you, what could you do? A multitude. A, multitude. a new hair bobble, a new whatever. A glasses chain, actually. Can you vlog camera out? What are you vlog I can't just vlog me, Bella. You have to be involved too. This is a, a joint process, a team effort. Oh, what did you do to it? It's because I, my, I do my trainers up too tight. So when we're off for a race, Bella's very much the gentleman of our, of our relationship and carries the bags because apparently I'm tapering, so I don't need to be carrying any extra. Get yourself a partner that is as supportive as that. Don't ever call me a gentleman again. Only once. You can, you can be the masculine energy in our relationship just today. Got it? I'll take that. Okay. Camera out. What have you got? I'm so hungry. 
has now burned. Do not try this at home, children, but this is the thing when you are a traveling athlete. It can be a challenge at times. I am now <clears throat> 1,100 calories in, and this is my first meal, so I need to get food in. This is black wild rice, chickpeas, teriyaki salmon, but I'll ask for no sauce, because it can upset my stomach. All the greens. like 9.2 thousand steps so one of my big rituals two days out is 15 thousand steps always keep up with the ritual so we've come out to explore this is the wonderful cathedral as Bella just told me some operatic singer over singing. here and Bella's head has turned because she loves opera <laughs> who's your favorite Andrew Bruschetti <laughs> Andrew Bruschetti <laughs> what is his name Andrew wow. Bruschetti wow Fucking bruschetti. So we've come exploring. We've just had our Buddha bowls. We're nice and full. I'm not. I could eat again. And yeah, we're gonna go and explore. Bella's already spotted a Zara, <laughs> so she's started to make a beeline. And then I said, get the vlog camera out and show them the cafe, cafe, cafe draw. <laughs> Peace out for now, peeps. Bye. So we have come to find water, still water, coconut milk for my protein shake, uh, the nature's best uh, electrolytes. I'm going to mix some sauerkraut with some sprouted broccoli because I miss it from home. Beetroot juice, nitric oxide helps oxygenize the blood and transport oxygen. Honey for the race. Just got to figure out how to get this <laughs> in my mouth. And these have no rancid oils in, so they're a winner as well. Boom. So we're off to find a little bit of breakfast. Um, brunch, should we call it. I've already had a shake this morning. I'm a shake down. We managed to find this little place here. Look. Naturacy, I'm not sure how you say it, but that was my best attempt at it. And uh, yeah, we managed to find like coconut milk, um, yeah, basically some stuff that I need. So beetroot juice, etc. So yeah, so essentially that was wicked yesterday. That allowed me to have my uh, my protein shake and collagen this morning. We're now off to find a bit of brunch. Have woken up with a little bit of congestion which isn't the best I don't know if it's a cold but I'm hoping it's not um, and I'm hoping that it is just we basically asked for the hotel to take all of our duvet covers off all of our cushions covers off because they had sprayed fragrance all over it and I'm quite sensitive really sensitive to the point where um, I haven't actually worn a commercial would, would they call it um, cosmetic fragrance for a long long period of time um, I use essential oils and healthy versions of perfume essentially so anything like that I'm really really sensitive to in the nose and throat uh, so we've actually asked them to because as soon as I walked in the hotel room it literally hit me and I said to Bella just do me a favor I was like that's definitely not air freshener would you just put your head near the bed and smell it <laughs> And they had that sprayed like fragrance all over it. It's highly toxic. Like this stuff, this stuff like <coughs> promotes development of cancers and things like that. So it's um, super important to look after ourselves and our health. So I'm not sure whether it's just maybe a little something I've picked up off the aeroplane, or um, like it's sinusy because of uh, the fragrances have really aggravated my nose and throat. But we probably see. I'm hoping today I'm doing some breath work gonna go find some nature as well because obviously Milan we're in a city so um, I always feel that spending a little bit of time in nature when you feel like this is super important as well um, just allows you to kind of like regather and your body wants to be in nature so we're gonna go hunt that out after some brunch and uh, get some good food in and see how I feel a bit later but um, keeping my fingers crossed keeping as positive as possible because right now if I'd have woke up this morning trying to run a high rocks would have been uh, but I got through it, but I'm not sure if it would have been my best performance. So, yeah, let's see how today goes. Moved inside because of the smoke. Boom, boom, boom. Some wonderful sweet potatoes. Eggs. Eggs, anyway. Yummy, yum. Happy? Mm. Mm -hmm. So, we're doing a 30 minute run, keeping it at like about 5.30. So, keeping the heart rate 
in zone two. Uh, tomorrow will be a little shake out since it's the last bit of intensity. After this 30 minute run, I'm going to hop on the rower. I'm going to do four rounds of 500 meter row. Lucky the hotel has a rower. Uh, into a little bit of dumbbell work, 50 uh, dumbbell upright row. I'll do 250 meter jog and then some dumbbell swings just to activate the glutes, keep them firing for Saturday. I'm going to do four rounds of that. It's probably going to be about 40 minutes of work, so it's that all good. Missy's just smashed out a run as well. Crushing it. Oh, what was that? So obviously, first day of take a week. Um, so this is obviously as part of my take a week vlog. Um, we just arrived this morning. So first thing was obviously delayed. Then we didn't manage to get food in. By that point, we'd done around 12,000 steps. I'd burnt about, I was about 900, 1,000 calories down already. Um, and we, I'd only had a shake that morning of 400. So it was a bit of a rush around today to like get here, find food, which can always be a little bit more challenging when you're looking for like clean nutrition. Um, but we managed to find a Buddha bowl place, uh, had wild rice with smoked salmon, etc. Um, and then we did about 10,000 steps of walking around, exploring, not too many. Just going to take a session. This is probably my last bit of intensity now. Um, tomorrow, Friday, the day before the race, will just be like a 20 minute shakeout run, which we'll probably do through the through Milan, through the city, just to keep the legs moving. Um, I never really, personally, it's not a one size fits all, but personally, I don't like to do nothing the day before a race. Otherwise, I go really sluggish. I feel like um, my legs go heavy. So, the 20 minute shakeout tomorrow is super important for me. Um, this just now was a uh, 30 minute run, uh, keeping it in zone two, and then followed by four rounds of 500 meter row. So I was lucky that the hotel had a rower. Um, uh, it was some dumbbell work, really light. I think it was like 15 uh, sumo deadlift high pull. And then I did 250 meter run, steady pace. This is just movement, by the way. Um, then it was into, that was meant to be kettlebell swings, but used dumbbell for the swing, and I did four rounds of that. So it's about 50 minutes of work, but again, it was more movement based, not letting the heart rate go into zone four and five, and just steady flow. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go back up now. It's like seven o'clock, so I'm gonna get some more food in. I'm probably gonna order maybe like a steak. Um, my body's working really, re really well on red meat at the moment. I'm pretty tired, um, and I feel a little snuffly, so I'm, I don't know if that's like the plane. Um, so I'm going to get a really good night's sleep, have a little bit of a lay in, try and get a good nine hours in tonight. Um, I should be fresh tomorrow, so I'll check in there. So I am jumping on here because I am back from Milan. Uh, as you probably know if you follow my socials, things didn't quite go to plan. Um, basically, 24 hours out from the competition, I ended up with what I think, haven't tested, but what I think is probably COVID or just a really nasty virus. Um, so yeah, so you, basically my tape a week vlog um, got cut short from Thursday. So obviously I vlogged getting into Milan on Thursday. Um, the, the training I did on Thursday, which was two days out from the competition, but I didn't quite get to vlog what was going on Friday and Saturday leading up to the race. So what I thought I would do is rather than wasting that vlog and, and leaving it um, after such great content during the week, I thought I would top it off with telling you uh, exactly what that two days out from competition would really look like. Um, and I think that's the best thing to, to do um, because obviously I didn't get to kind of show you what I would be doing um, in that day or that 48 hour period before a race. So obviously I've already been through my nutrition for the week, what my training looked like. Um, we kept the intensity uh, where it needed to be, but a lot of my volume was very low in that taper week. And that's what we ideally want to aim for. We want to aim for around like, probably like 50% of the volume we would have been doing um, in the training leading up to that. So. The day before the race, um, Friday is obviously the day I ended up quite poorly. Now the intention was to do a 20 minute shakeout run, which is what I would do uh, the day before a race. Uh, nothing that's gonna put my body through any adaptation or stimulus that's gonna require recovery because ideally in a taper week, we wanna be conserving energy. We don't wanna be putting it into uh, you know, recovery and regenerating uh, cells and protein synthesis and all this stuff that goes on. We don't really want that to be happening because we want our energy as reserved as possible. 
Now, also what we want to be thinking about is the, the, the 28, 28, 24, sorry, hours out from competition is we want to be thinking about really knuckling down on, um, hydration. So we want to be really making sure we're drinking good quality, clean water. Uh, spring water is my favorite as opposed to tap water, of course, or filtered water. I tend to put lots of fulvic minerals, uh, lots of sea salt, Celtic sea salt, lots or Himalayan, uh, pink salt, um, lots of lemon to keep the body, uh, really kind of, um, out, out in the alkali state and those are the things that we really want to aim for but we also want to be thinking about there's a lot of questions around carbohydrate you know uh loading and things like that now high rocks isn't really an event that requires heaps and heaps of carbohydrate loading and we have to also remember that our sugar level does this so if we're carb spiking our our energy is also dropping on the back end of that so if we are going to carb load we have to be really careful of the timings we're having carbohydrates. We can't continuously for the 24 hours leading to the race, spike and then have a drop, spike and then have a drop, especially when we wanna be sleeping well the night before the event, okay? Because our sugar level will determine um, you know, how well we sleep that night before the race as well. So I don't necessarily carb load as such, um, but I do have an element of probably two portions of good quality carbohydrates, uh, that will probably make up for around about 40% of my calorie intake the day before the race. And that's kind of my big focus. And then the rest will be 40% protein and 20% uh, fats as well. And that's pretty much what my, my general week to week flow is as well. I don't alter too much in my nutrition the race week because we don't want to be again changing anything requiring our body to adapt in any way we want to be keeping it as steady and as in flow as possible um with regards to like routines before the race uh i tend to have um a little bit of a i'll save mindset for another another uh, vlog but um i tend to have what i call a traveling altar with me which is things that if i'm traveling to an event that's abroad uh, i tend to take with me uh, it's actually a, a Buddhist poem, so it's like, oh, I'll show you guys, it's like about retaining peace, so I'll put that out next to my bed. Um, I also have a couple of things that remind me of home, so I actually have a picture of me when I was like six, and it just brings that little jade um, out of me, and, it, and, and there's this kind of thing that my therapist works through with me, which is like, that race is about being in a playground, like it's not about taking it too seriously, it's about taking little jade, and all of the fears that she sometimes has that pop up because a lot of us will be in our inner child a lot of the time uh, when we're in our fight or flight stimulus and a lot of us will have anxiety around uh, racing so we want to be bringing ourselves back to uh, real life and in our wiser self um, you know as much as possible so you know we don't want to be taking it too seriously so have a traveling altar that reminds me of that that, that little girl that's always been loving her fitness, loving of exercise and throwing myself in the deep end. Um, and that picture will go on the altar next to my bed. Um, I also have a couple of like uh, crystals as well. Um, some uh, chakra work that I go through in the evening to really kind of align the energy fields and stuff. Um, but yeah, essentially the, the morning of the race, obviously it all depends on what time you're racing. So for example, Milan was supposed to be a 11 a.m. start. So I don't want to eat too much food. Now, this is the, the challenge I have um, because I know the body really, really well on a physiological level. And our body uses so much energy to digest food. So we don't want to be wasting too much energy the morning of an event digesting loads and loads and loads of food. So what we want to be thinking about is if like I was racing at 11, I would probably wake up nice and early. So I'd be thinking about maybe 6.30 a.m., um, and then I would be having like probably liquid fuel to start with. So I'd ease my body into digestion. So I would have like raw milk, which is what I always have, my shake, my protein, uh, maybe some greens, uh, living fuel, and also uh, some collagen, probably um, some slow release carbohydrates. So some berries, etc. And that would be probably my first meal, which would probably give me around 550 calories. Um, and then before the race, I would eat like two hours before. So I'd probably have maybe some chia seeds that have been pre-soaked overnight in coconut milk with some more berries, some honey, uh, maybe a couple of um, oats as well that have been soaked in there overnight. And that will probably like be enough for me to feel really comfortable. If I go the other way and eat too much, I feel too stodgy. My body's using too much energy digesting food. Um, so, you know, if you're having like a, like a mid morning or a, a like a lunchtime, I would think about probably like 
two small meals as opposed to like one big heavy breakfast and then nothing because again your body you don't want to be having too much um, meat in the morning where it's going to take a lot to digest like uh, lots of like um, saturated fats as well like they can be quite tough to digest on the digestive system so you're actually pulling energy away from where it needs to be in that race however if you are you know racing in the afternoon or like early evening then that changes a little bit because obviously you're going to be burning lots of calories through the day um, and you're also going to require the calories so that's that requires a little bit of a different approach if you're if you're obviously racing in the afternoon um, but yeah like that's that's pretty much my tape week I've vlogged um, I'm sure I'll probably vlog another one mid-season um, and you know it's it's all about what works for you so I think it's really important not to change too much like what i would also say that in that taper week you probably want to be trying to start to train at the time you're going to be racing so it just gets your body used to so when you know your race time or roughly what time you're going to be racing so for example if i'm well enough um i'll be racing in birmingham and um i know that the pro women is going to be like later in the afternoon so my training now for the next two weeks i'll probably start to train in the afternoon um, as opposed to early in the morning so that my body gets used to that training clock and that training cycle. So, um, yeah, that is my taper week. Um, <laughs> the whole idea of this vlog was actually to take you to the race with me, show you my food in the morning of the race, but I was so poorly. Um, if you check my other vlog, um, about Milan, so it's actually a, a full Milan vlog, uh, you will actually see how poorly I was because <laughs> Bella whipped the camera out on the Saturday I was supposed to be racing, the Friday, um, and yeah, there, there was no decision to be made. Uh, it was taken from me, so, uh, you know, it was made for me, should I say. So I believe in universal power, as frustrating as it was at the time, as many tears as there were, um, you know, it is the start of the season at the end of the day. And, you know, there's nothing I really could have done uh, more to really protect my immune system and things. It was just one of those things um, could be, you know, 10% more stress that week that could tip the body over the edge. But I guess, yeah, in my Milan vlog, I actually talk about, you know, how to approach frustrations like that and how to deal with them because they can be tough sometimes. But um, I do believe that the universe has something better mapped out when we're sometimes held back from uh, from doing certain things. So, yeah, this is me over and out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this taper week lead up. Like I said, I'm gutted I didn't get to show you my actual race day, um, but I've given you some great tips in here that I hope you can take into your next event um i am off now take care check out my milan vlog that is going to be uploaded uh next week and uh, i'll catch you later bye